Let's take a look at the accelerometer demo LabVIEW project. Here I have the PMOD ACL board connected to MXP connector A. All right, the accelerometer demo is running right now. Here I have the raw data being pulled from the accelerometer. That would be six bytes. These are the formatted acceleration values in least significant bit units. And here I'm plotting the, the X, Y, and Z values on the graph. Let's give this a try. You try wiggling along the Z axis and we see, say like for the X axis or Y axis, then you see corresponding large spikes happening on those plots. Let's try this. This is with the X axis pointing up and the device indicates that that's plus one G. X axis pointing straight down that registers as minus one G. Similar idea, we can try it out for Y. This is the Y axis pointing straight up and now pointing straight down. All right, I'm going to draw your attention to the X axis again. I have single tap detection, that is this 1T, single tap detection enabled for the X axis. And if you look carefully on the My Rio, I have the onboard LED zero indicating a single tap interrupt. Now, it's only along the x-axis, so you might try tapping along the y, or maybe shaking along z a bit, and you should observe that it's only sensitive in the x-direction. All right, let me stop the VI and we'll start taking a look at the block diagram. We have the initialization tasks happening first. I have the main timed loop and inside this main loop, we wait for the data ready interrupt to go active. And when it is active, then we read the data, generate the formatted results. And finally, when we break out of the loop, we do a little bit of cleanup at the end. Now let me focus your attention in this area. This is all based on the MyRio I2C and I'm using the low-level I2C VIs. The open I2C specifies which channel, so I'm using either connector A or connector B. The configure I2C selects your data rate, standard 100 kilobits per second, or you could select fast mode at 400 kilobits per second. This is the, the I2C write VI. You'll notice that this is encased inside a for loop. I have a 2D array and that allows me to specify a pair of values for register address and then the associated data value. For example, there's data format, there's the duration, and so on. You can use data operations to insert or delete rows and that way you can customize the register data pairs as needed. I'd encourage you to refer to the data sheet for complete details, especially on the specific values of these data registers. Now inside the for loop, I have the I2C write, and that requires the PMOD ACL address, which is hexadecimal 1D. Down here, I'm making use of the low level DIO VIs. For the purpose of monitoring the output pin, I'm using a read, and for the purpose of Activating the onboard LED zero, I'm using a write. And these are all available right here. All right, let's move on from configuration and go into the main loop for processing. The main loop begins by monitoring the two in interrupt output pins. Index array picks these off as interrupt one and two. Interrupt 1 is connected to this case structure. When false, it's a simple pass-through for the error cluster. And when true, this is used to read and format values. Interrupt number 2 is simply passed off directly to the LED0 for monitoring purposes. 
All right, the first step here is to read the interrupt source register and that clears the interrupts. You first write the register address and then read its value. Here I'm doing a little bit of manipulations to take that interrupt source and ultimately change it into a nice Boolean array indicator back here. All right, having done that task, continue by reading three 16-bit accelerometer values. You write the address of the first register and then do a read of six bytes. Use index array to pick out all of the individual bytes, and then I'm using join numbers to join those into 16-bit signed integers. And these become the primary display for the numerical values, x, y, and z axes. I'm also displaying the raw bytes back here as the array on the front panel. X, Y, and Z values are bundled together and sent to the waveform chart. Now a number of these nodes are all associated with arrays, and that would be right here. This is build array. Here we had index array and reverse 1D array. These are all located back here on the array subpalette. join numbers and the conversion to a signed 16-bit value. These are located right here. Look under the numeric subpalette. Under data manipulation, you have join numbers. Back up here under conversions, this is where you convert to a, what, what's called a word integer. And also we can convert number to Boolean. The bundle is located under the cluster subpalette. All right, let's take a look at following the error cluster. The error cluster sequences which action happens first, and I have initially two parallel threads of error clusters, one for the I2C blocks or I2C VIs and the other for the DIO sub VIs. The two error clusters are brought together right here, first and second one. This is called Merge Errors, and this is available right here, the Dialog and User Interface subpalette. And as I'm looking at this, it would be advisable to use the output of Merge Errors as the input to the OR gate that's ORing in the stop button. So that way an error on either thread would break us out of the loop. Once you break out of the loop, pass through the simple error handler and execute a MyRio reset. Finally, looking at the loop timing, we have a one megahertz clock selected with 100 microsecond period. And that makes it possible for this VI to work with the fastest data rate that you might select for the accelerometer.